Hey guys, what's up? Back with day 12 here. This will be one of the last ones we have before the test. What I highly advise you guys do is, um, well, rewatch any of the videos, but especially the review ones, because I sum up a lot of things into one lesson. Going through days one through day 12 of the review videos will be a good way to just make sure it's all fresh in your head going into the test. Um, Monday in class, there'll be a lot of people gone for AP Bio, but Monday ninth hour and after school, I'll be staying to just for one last review session, right? I can stay as late as six, so um, it's a good chance to go through some things. Remember, the test is on Tuesday. Uh, make sure you're, that you get to school on time. If you are late, they will not admit you to the test, and you will be, and you will not be able to take the test. So, get here, get here early. Make sure you know if you're taking the bus to school, get to the bus stop early. Make sure no, don't leave any margin for error. Um, I'll be in my room Tuesday morning, um, going through stuff with you guys one last time, um, and I'll send you off to do the best you can. Okay, I want to just do a, kind of a quick review on differential equations, and then there's one thing <coughs> with L'Hopital's rule. If it comes up on the free response question, I want to talk about um, just the kind of notation that you need to make sure that you get all the points you can get. Okay, differential equations. Um, the types of things we have to do for differential equations, sometimes they make you write a tangent line equation and use it to estimate something. Okay, that should be pretty straightforward. Sometimes it'll give you a slope field and you have to sketch a curve. Remember, just plot the, the point they give you and just follow the, follow the shape of the graph, the, the slope, line, slope field. Um, sometimes you have to make your own slope field. Make sure you hit every single point they ask for. If they ask for 12, make sure you got 12. And just plug in each point and figure out what that slope is, especially looking for things like slopes of zero. Make sure if it's a positive slope, you have a positive number. Make sure if it's a negative slope, you have a negative number. If you have a number less than one, it, should be, it shouldn't be very steep. If you have a number greater than one, it should be pretty steep. The big thing, though, is... Um, solving for the particular solution. A couple of things there. The majority of the points majority of the points are for solving for the particular solution. Sometimes they'll say it like that. Solve for the particular solution, y equals f of x. Or they might say, solve for the, you know, write an equation for, if it's a letter, they might say, write an equation for m of t, write an equation for h of t, write an equation for g of t, something like that. If they're saying that, that means we're solving the differential equation. Okay? And the, the steps are, Number one, separate. Okay. So when we separate, we always multiply the dx from the bottom over, or if it's a dt or something. Right? We want to group variables on each side. If your equation is missing a variable, okay, leave any constants on the side that doesn't have the variable. I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, we we've had that strategy this year, but just as a reminder on that. Okay, so number one, we have to separate. If you do not do step one, you can't earn any of the points on the problem. So you must separate when you're solving these. That's always step one. And just follow your math, right? Multiply the bottom over, right? And figure out how you need to get, right? If it's dy over dx, figure out how to get y to the other side. Sometimes you'll be multiplying y. Sometimes you'll be dividing y, right? Leave parentheses alone, right? If you have like y minus 2 in parentheses and it's on top, divide y minus 2 over. Keep the parentheses together. Number one is separate. 
Step two, integrate both sides. Again, you're doing both sides. Generally on the, on the scoring of the test, generally speaking, you get a point for doing each integral correctly. So even if one of them is a, ch a challenge and you're not sure if you're doing it right, right, do your best with it, but make sure you get the easier one of the two so you at least get that one out of two points there, okay? When you integrate, you need to have plus C, but you only need one plus C, I'd always do plus C on the right. Okay. After I integrate both sides and I have my plus C on the right, I use the initial condition, right, three, solve for C using the point. Now, sometimes before you solve for C, you might want to get your equation into an easy to analyze form. For example, let's say you have negative Y to the negative one, right? That's what came out after you did your integral. Change negative Y to the negative one, change that to negative one over Y. In term, it'll just make it a lot easier to solve for C if you do that, okay? After you solve for C, then step four is solve for Y. If your equation doesn't have Y in it, solve for whichever one is on the top, right? If it's DH DT, that means solve for H. If it's DC DT, solve for Z. If it's DQ DT, solve for Q. Right, whatever it is, solve for the y variable. When you look at the equation, right, it's always d something over d something. The top something is what you're always going to be solving, is what you want to solve for. Okay, unless they specifically ask for a different thing to solve for. Okay, so just some examples that we might see. So let's say we see this, and it says solve for the particular solution y equals f of x, right? First thing we have to do is separate. So this dx is going to multiply out here. This is going to stay put, but this, 4 minus y, I have to divide over. So I'll get dy over 4 minus y equals x squared plus 2 dx, okay? So that's the first step. Um, just to give you a point here, let's say our point is the point um, two, three. Yeah. Or they might say f of two equals three. Right? If they give it to you like this, this one is your x, this one is your y. Okay, now once I get here, I want to integrate both sides. Anytime I have y or a constant plus or minus y or y plus or minus a constant, anytime I have something like that, as long as that y is to the first power, this is going to be a natural log integral. However, we have to be very careful here. If you notice, the y here is negative. So if we did a u substitution, it would actually come out as negative ln 4 minus y. So this is going to come out negative ln absolute value 4 minus 1 equals 1 third x cubed plus 2x plus c. So we do the integral of both sides here. I got my plus c on my right, so I did both integrals. I got my plus c on the right. Now I want to plug in the point 2, 3 to solve this thing. We're going to have negative natural log of 4 minus 3 equals 1 third 2 cubed 
plus 2 times 2 plus C. Now, if you end up with a natural log with an absolute value, just a reminder on this. When we plug in our point, I want to observe right now. If you notice, 4 minus 3 is going to make a positive number. If what's in here, if what's in here makes a positive number before we do the absolute value, we can, we can drop absolute value when solving. If what's in here makes a minus, then we drop absolute value and make the right side negative. Or multiply, sorry, not make, multiply the right side, the whole thing, put parentheses around the whole thing, multiply the whole right side by negative. Okay. So right now I see that this makes a positive number. 4 minus 3 is a positive number. So when, I come, when it comes time to drop the absolute values, I can just simply drop them. If, I would have, if the y value would have been 5, now 4 minus 5 is a negative number. When I went to drop the signs, I'd have to drop them and make the whole opposite side negative. Okay. Multiply the whole opposite side by negative 1. Okay, so it's good to notice that right now so we don't have to think about it later. Okay, solving this thing. 4 minus 3 is 1. The absolute value is 1. Of 1 is 1. Natural log of 1 is 0. That's something we need to know. So the natural log of 0 that makes the whole left side 0. On the right, thing, on the right side, I get 8 thirds plus 4 plus C. So I get 12 plus 8, I get 20 thirds. So I know C is equal to negative 20 thirds. Now I just have to plug back in, right? Just look up here, and I'll plug back in. So I've got negative ln 4 minus y equals a third x cubed plus, what was it, two? A third x cubed, oh, it's weird. What's going on? There it is. Plus two x minus 20 over three. Now when I solve this, I might say, oh yeah, we get rid of natural log with E, which is true, okay? But if you have a negative natural log, get rid of the negative one first. Let's go ahead and multiply everything by negative one first. Take care of that before you take care of the natural log. Okay. Now we can get rid of the natural log by raising both sides to the power of e. e to the ln of absolute value 4 minus y is absolute value 4 minus y. Now what do I do with my absolute values? Well, since my initial condition made what's inside of that absolute value a positive number, I can simply drop them. If, if what was inside the absolute value would have been negative, then I would have had negative e to the negative one-third x cubed minus 2x plus 20 over 3. I don't mess with the exponent. I just put a negative 1 in front of the e. Now I'm going to subtract 4 and divide by negative 1. And I'm going to get y equals negative e to the negative one-third x cubed minus 2x plus 20 over 3. 
plus one. Okay. You can always check to see if you're right. By If I plug in the number two for x, right? Plug in your initial point. My point was, where was it? Two, three. If I plug in two for x, I get negative eight thirds minus four plus 20 thirds gives me zero. E to the zero is one. Negative e to the zero is negative one. Negative one plus four equals three. Okay. What I was talking about, um, the other one is, let's say I have dh dt equals, uh, let's say negative two thirds h minus 40. And again, let's say my point is zero, 50. H is like the Y, T is like X. Now, if you notice, there's no T on the right side of the equation. That's okay. I'm going to multiply the DT over to separate, and I'm just going to divide over the H minus 40, leaving the negative two-thirds to be on the right side with that DT. So I get this. Now I integrate both sides. This, once again, is going to be a natural log, but this time it's going to be a positive natural log, h minus 40. And this is going to be a negative 2 thirds t. And when you integrate a constant, you just tack on the variable. In this case, the variable is t. By the way, if, if there was no negative 2 thirds there, what there would be there is a 1. So the integral of dt would just simply be 1t, or you could just call it t plus c. Okay, okay I'm going to plug in the point 0, 50. And I get ln 50 minus 40 equals negative 2 thirds times 0, which is 0, plus c. So I'm just going to say this. Again, in here is a plus. So when it comes to drop the absolute values, you can just simply drop them. And I get ln 10 equals C. Now some people leave that absolute value on the 10. Don't do that, just call it ln 10. The absolute value of 10 is 10, so just leave it as ln 10. So my equation will read ln h minus 40 equals negative 2 thirds T plus ln 10. Now I'm going to solve for h. There's no negative out front, so I don't have to worry about that. I'm going to raise both sides to the power of, uh, raise them as exponents of e. And I'm going to get h minus 40 equals e to the negative 2 thirds t plus ln 10. Now I can drop my absolute values without altering the other side of the equation, and then I'm just going to add 40. And again, if I plug in 0 for t, I get e to the 0 plus ln 10 is e to the ln 10, which is 10. 10 plus 40 is 50, so it works with my initial condition. This is how I'd want you to write your answer on free response. This would be a good FRQ answer. On multiple choice, they would simplify this to h equals 10 e to the negative 2 thirds t plus 4. They would make that simplification. Okay. I don't want you to make that simplification because it just wastes time. But I need you to understand that that is a simplification. So if you see it on, on the multiple choice, you, you know what, what's happening there. Okay.
One more example. Okay, let's say we have dy dx equals y squared x. Or sorry, let's say y squared times sine x. Solving this, I keep the sine x over there, and I divide the y squared. I get dy over y squared equals sine x dx. Now, this is not a natural log problem. Before I integrate this, I'm going to call this y to the negative 2 dy. Okay. The, the antiderivative of y to the negative 2, we bump into, this is a bump and divide. I bump to a power of negative 1, I divide by negative 1 to get negative y to the negative 1 equals the antiderivative of sine. Don't mess this up, is negative cosine x plus c. I'm not going to solve this one all the way out here, but when you're solving for your c, this is what I was talking about in the video, go ahead and change this to negative 1 over y. Go ahead and change that to negative 1 over y. It'll just make everything easier in terms of solving for your c as well as solving for your y. Okay? The last thing with L'Hopital's rule on free response. Okay. The things you must do to earn full credit. Number one, you must show the L'Hopital rule applies. For example, you have to show that plugging into your limit makes zero over zero. Once you show that, number two, you can you have to state using L'Hopital's, and actually write the whole word, it's just L apostrophe hospitals. If you spell it wrong, it's not a big deal. You must state using L'Hopital's rule. The third thing you must do, right? L'Hopital's rule just says do the derivative of the top, do the derivative of the bottom, and redo the limit. You must have limit notation, you must have limit notation in front of ratios of coefficients. Sorry, ratio of derivatives. I mean. Okay. Here's what I mean by that. Real quick, let's say we have the limit as x goes to 2 of f of x plus 5 over x squared minus 4. Okay? So let's say we get, this is the problem. Okay? Well, we're going to plug this in, and we're going to say, we're going to look at f of 2 plus 5 over 2 squared minus 4. Let's say you have to solve this, and when you solve it, you get negative 5. <clears throat> you must show that we get 0 over 0. Okay? Then you say using L'Hopital's. You need to tell the grader that that's what you're doing. Using L'Hopital's rule. Now here's the important part. You must rewrite this limit notation. You must say limit x goes to 2. And now we do the derivative of the top. The derivative of f of x plus 5 is simply f prime of x. The derivative of x squared minus 4 is 2x. You must have this in front. Otherwise, you lose a whole bunch of points. Okay? Then you re-plug in. And let's say we get f prime of 2 over 2 times 2, which is 4. Let's say we figure out f prime of 2 to be equal to 10. So you get 10 fourths. You can leave it as 10 fourths or 5 halves, right, or 2.5. Any of those are fine. But you must, this right here, this limit notation right here is, you must have this in there. Otherwise, you're going to lose a bunch of points um, that you should be earning. All right, that's it for today. I will see you guys.
on Monday, especially if you're taking the AP bio, make sure you come to ninth hour with me to at least check in, get what we worked on in class. And I'll see you guys Monday. Get good sleep this weekend. Keep going through your Quizlet. Rewatch these videos. Let's give it our best shot we possibly can on Tuesday. Talk to you guys later. Two trains. Bye.